WIFO-FM Jessa, Big Dog Country Radio, 105.5 FM. It is now time for the world-famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by O'Quinn & Associates, Murphy Builder Supply, Vans Barbecue, and First Southern Bank. Are you looking for an insurance company that you can call and talk to a live person? Are you looking for an insurance company where you can walk in and talk to an agent? Are you looking for an insurance company that offers multiple companies so they can try and get you the best rate? If you said yes to any of these, then you need to call or come by Oakwind & Associates Insurance Financial Services. We offer multiple companies so we can find the best fit for you. Give us a call at 385-1000 or stop by our office at 212 South Fair Street right here in Jessup. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. When it comes to barbecue, Vans Barbecue and Jessup is the place to be. A small family-owned business located at 1876 on the Savannah Highway. Vans Barbecue has lunch and dinner specials. Stop by or call to make an order. The number to call, 427-3358. Vans Barbecue's new manager is Sarah Van. Vans Barbecue offers potato salad, coleslaw, baked beans, and don't forget their delicious mac and cheese. Also, check out their shrimp plates, the best in town. Yes, when it comes to the barbecue, head to Vans Barbecue, locally owned and operated. Stop by and tell them the big dog sent you. Once again, the number to order, 427-3358. Hi, I'm Raymond Brown. And I'm Mandy Yeomans. At First Southern Bank, our customers are like family. As a locally owned community bank, we're dedicated to helping our clients succeed. We have loans for every need, whether it's personal or business. We have lines of credit, auto loans, equipment loans, and of course, we offer mortgages. Stop by our bank or call us at 912-588-1010 and see how First Southern Bank can help you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. The world famous Butch and Bob Show. World famous Butch and Bob Show right here on WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup, Big Dog Country Radio. Bob, how's it going? It's going good. Going good? Yep. Had a great weekend. Saw family, got to go to the island, get some good seafood, saw the Second Chance Band play down at Neptune Park, and went to the Memorial Day Celebration Monday, and got to play golf, and had a lot of good things. It Man, was a good that weekend. was a good, busy weekend, wasn't it? Busy weekend, got a lot done, had a good time. So the Second Chance Turned was playing at Neptune. Hmm? Yep. What day was that again? That was uh, Sunday night. Sunday night. Yep. Big crowd down there. Saw Mark Williams, the new head of Jekyll Island Tory. Said he's going to come on the show in a couple weeks, so that'll be good. That'll be great. So, saw Amy Denny, going to get her lined up. She's got that new state job. So, a lot of Wayne County is down there watching Second Chance Band. It was a good good time. Good time was had by all. It's hard to find a parking space down there, though. <laughs> but I, got yeah. I got to eat at Iguanas. I was trying to go to the Crab Trap, but that was there's no way you find a parking space there. So, drove around, finally. I pulled into the middle of Mushroom parking lot, and there's no parking space there. And I was pulling out and looked right across, and there's one parking space. You found so it. So I found it and got to go to eat at Iguanas. I hadn't been to Iguanas in a while. It's, it's good fried shrimp. So had a good time, and I went did the dance and saw Mark and all the gang, Second Chance Band, Jack Brinkley still singing. Still has that golden voice. Still has it, huh? Yeah. So it was a good time. Big crowd down there as well. Place was packed. It's pretty, it's a pretty place down there. It's nice down there on St. Simons. Yep. And, you know, luckily the weather got better on on Sunday afternoon than it did on yeah. Saturday. I heard the weather was bad here Saturday. Saturday was, oh, it was it, bad. And Roswell was up to 80 degrees. They were Man, it was party. bad down here. It was raining and cold and windy. My niece I mean, you is, couldn't do anything outside on Saturday here. My niece's this little boy, Parker, had a six-year-old birthday party. He had about 15 of his friends there, and they were all jumping in the pool. So it was a nice day up in Roswell on Saturday. 
So it's just a good pool party. You know, it's good weather up there. Good weather in Southwest Georgia. Talked with someone over there, but over here, you can just see that 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 circle of of, of weather off the the Atlantic there, just you know, going in about you know, I guess to about Hazelhurst or somewhere along there, just whipping around all the way up the the South Carolina coast there, and um, and then as it moved north, you know, it um, rained out the um, uh, the um, Coca Cola 600 on Sunday there in Charlotte, and they and they end up having to run it yesterday. Let me talk about holiday traffic Friday. I think it went 40 miles bumper to bumper, no wrecks, just traffic. Just traffic huh? just on the way up there. On the way up there, it's just like they this, said it was going to be the busiest Memorial like, Day weekend in a long time. This is just painful. <laughs> <laughs> I kept looking. Is there a wreck? I kept listening. No nope. radiation. A There's a no. Just heavy traffic. Uh, yeah. Uh, got through it, but that took a long time to get there. A lot longer than I expected. I thought I'd get there at three and get there about five thirty. That's the way it is in the Atlanta area. It's crazy. You just never know. It was a good weekend. Great service at uh, Memorial Day. Like I said, Buddy Carter's going to join us tomorrow. Give us more information on this debt ceiling deal that been reached, whether or not it's going to get passed or not. I think they said they vote Wednesday, so he's going to call in tomorrow morning, give us the latest update of what's going on. But it was good to see him. He did a nice job. I did a great job singing the national anthem. Mickey Tom did a nice job on the opening prayer. and Just a very nice ceremony. They had a nice crowd there at, uh, at the wall yesterday morning. It was a okay. very good crowd, so it was a good turnout. So. The Memorial Day wall ceremony that was held yesterday no, morning said, at 10 o'clock there in front of the hospital. Yeah, like Buddy said, important to remember why we have all these freedoms. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. No doubt about that. So, but it was a good weekend. Had to get uh, got to play golf yesterday, so it was all you did? good. Yep. Didn't play. So you missed Saturday, so you played Monday. Yeah. Well, they didn't play Saturday here. They couldn't play Saturday. I was glad. Even to, if you were here, you wouldn't play. play. That's that's what I hate. I hate missing my Saturday golf. But when I found out they weren't playing, I was like, I felt better. Yeah, yeah. They couldn't play. It was it was it was. So I was don't miserable. know if I've ever seen a, such a cool yeah. Memorial Day weekend. I said it was miserable here Saturday. Yeah, you, you didn't want to really do anything outside on Saturday around here. Sunday was better, as you well know, because you were there in St. Simons. And then, of course, yesterday was even better. And today's supposed to be partly sunny, just a 30% chance of showers, with a high of around 86. So another another good-looking day. Yeah. Sad news over the weekend, Ray House passing. That was, yeah, that, that was, was def- shocking. That was shocking. And I said, just saw him Thursday at the city meeting. And, and found out he had a heart attack on Saturday morning. So, in that funeral was set for today at 11 a.m. at Reinhardt, and the visitation takes place between 10 to 11 before the service. So, Reverend Stanley taught officiating. So, so they're going ahead and doing the service today. Today is the service at 11 okay. o'clock this morning. So that then, was shocking. I heard it on Saturday, and just you know, just you say, well, we just heard him, you know, from the, the meeting the day a few days right, before. Right. Uh, just never know. You never know. I see. No one's guaranteed more. No, they're not. Uh, but that was just a sad, that sad That was very sad days. He has served the city of Jessup for a long time. Yeah, 25 years on that city council. Long time. Uh, I'm being honest, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if his district's up for re-election. They said they got elections this year, so I'm not sure if the his was one of those. Not Do they keep it empty until election time? But pen, well, if the election's coming up, I think they would, but if... If if his is, isn't one that's up for re-election, they probably have to have a special election. So I have to check with Tammy and all that. Find out what's going on there. Yeah. But just a sad. Like I said, it was sad to hear. I got that text Saturday morning. And I was just. I said, I just saw him Thursday at the city meeting. Yeah. I mean, that had that long, hour long meeting about the budget. So he was like I said, just heard we had his actuality on. You know, right. heard him talking about. Well, Friday morning. Yeah, yeah. hearing his uh, actuality on Friday morning. You know, when thoughts and prayers goes out to his, his family. Yeah. Um, so, Betty Carter on the Butch and Bob show to, to, uh, tomorrow morning. Yeah. And um, I think we may have the chamber on after. I think they're on tomorrow, too, so we'll have them on after Buddy gets through talking. I believe we do, if I remember correctly. And um, um, and 
and I'm not sure if we have anybody else the rest of the week. I'd have to look and see. I'm a bunch of Bob show. Well, the Boston Celtics just about made history, but came short against the Miami Heat. Hey, they boy. were down 3-0, came back to 3-3, and then lost hey, last boy. night. Short, I said. Charles Barkley hit the nail on the head. He said that team, you know, they live and die by the three. He said they don't have a plan B. The three-pointers go in, they win. If they don't, they lose. <laughs> and they didn't go in last night. They were like eight for 22 or something like that from three-point range. So, just, you know, Miami just took it to them. But that's the reason why it hasn't happened in 150 years. No one's come back from a 3-0 deficit. Hard to win four in a row. So, Celtics had a chance at home, but much of the – Disappointment of the Boston Celtic fans were leaving early in the fourth quarter. Just, were they? Yeah, they were just exiting early. But my, I don't know if anybody's going to beat Denver. Denver's got a very good basketball team, so it'll be fun to watch. Starts Thursday night, game one in Denver. But Denver's the number one seed. Miami's like an eight seed, so I think the odds are Denver's the odds on favorite to win. But we'll see how it all plays out. Celtics, I thought for sure we were going to win last night. And at home, game seven, had that right. big tip in on game six. That was a wild play. I'm sure most people have seen that. So, thought for sure they'd win at game seven, but they didn't do it. They fell apart. So, the Braves lost last night, but good to see Soroka back in the, on the mound. I said he had that torn Achilles back in. 2020, so nice to see him back on the mound. He's a good pitcher, just 25 years of age, so should help down the stretch for the Braves. Pitched six strong innings. They don't get the win. They lost, but it's good to see the 25-year-old back on the mound for the Braves. Right. I like him. Had a real good – he's a very good pitcher. Young pitcher, too. 25's got a bright future. Braves still ahead, but – Miami's hanging around. Mets are hanging around. Four There's games out, five games. Yeah, that's, you that's got all June, saying. all July, all of August. Yeah, all of it's a mar- marathon, not a sprint. So yeah, yeah four more go. months to go. So. And the recreation teams are out getting ready for the district play. Starts Thursday, June 6th. Some headed to Glenn County. Some headed to Douglas. Some headed to Ware County. So that's where the three locations are for the district all chart all-star team, so we'll keep you up to date on them. But they're out practicing and getting ready. They've been playing some practice games. Exciting times. Recreation's got a lot going on. All right. District playoff and then state playoff for the district, for the um, all-stars here from Wayne County. And I'm sure that, like I said, next Monday the football team will be up there getting ready. We'll check in on Coach Jay Boshaw and get the schedule on what else is going to take place this summer. A lot of Camps, a lot of seven on sevens. Everybody it's trying to get bigger, what they faster, go to stronger. During the summer, you yeah. know, all the different camps they go to, and the seven on sevens, and the the, the training, and all that yeah, kind of stuff. There, there's so many specialized camps now. They have got camps for linemen. They got camps for quarterbacks. They got mm-hmm. camps for kickers. They got camps for defensive backs. So it's all specialized now. So all these kids go to these different camps right. all across the state and other states, and pay all kinds of money and. Get tutelage from pro Some players. Yeah. Right. Yep. And a lot of them are held on college campuses, so they get to see, you know, the college uh, life. Right. They get to see the college facilities, right. the college Stay coaches, and, and, and all like that. that. Yeah. Right. So but there's a lot going on in the summertime. A lot of busy, busy time for a lot of kids. No more just graduating and showing back up toward the end of July to get you know, into shape for the season like it used to be. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. We're taking the summer off really meant taking the summer off, you know. Yeah. Summer somebody's talking about how it used to be three months when we were you know, you didn't go back to after Labor Day, but now it's like two months they're back in August. So. Yeah. Yeah, they spread the um they spread the uh school year season year out longer, more days off. Plus they graduate earlier so they can get the uh, kids into the um uh, the um summer semester at colleges. In the quarter system, it used to be later in June, but the semester it's earlier. And with the semester system, they start the regular uh, fall in you know mid August. Right. Unlike mid September, when you and I went to the University of Georgia, we we didn't start until like sixteenth, seventeenth, or something like that right. with the quarter. It's about yeah. when we started. I mean, if they had two home games before. Um, 
before you before get back that, on campus, the, right? Yeah. They have two home games. If the if right. the first two games were home games, you just missed them. Right. If you were a student, <laughs> unless you got there early, yeah. Now they're those already the, there. Those are the good old days. The good old days. I didn't go back to school till after Labor Day. It was like Rod song, a song Maggie May. It's late, late September. I must be getting back to school. I, yeah, three, it meant, uh, three, it meant that. You yeah, know, late three, September, three and I must be getting back to school. Summer just goes like that. I'll be back in school for you know. It was great uh, graduation ceremonies at uh, JC Stadium on Friday night. 300 and something graduates uh, get their diploma and move on with their lives. A good ceremony. Uh, uh, good uh, speeches done by the valedictorian salutorian, and uh, just congratulations to the class of uh, 2023. Heard it was a windy night. It was windy. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't heat the death out there this year. <laughs> you didn't have to worry about gnats getting in your eyes. <laughs> it was windy. I text Brett McDaniel. I said, "Good luck with graduation." He said, "Can you do something about the wind?" I said, "I have no control over the wind." Yeah. Yeah. You got to. You know. Put very paper weights wind, down to hold everything. Very down. windy night at the JC Stadium. So, no, like I said, at least, at least they didn't heat to death. No, no, no. No, I'd rather put up with the wind than the gnats and the heat. Yeah. And so it was just a great graduation ceremony, and we wish them all the best you know, as they move on to whatever endeavor they decide to do. A lot of proud mom and daddies and grandma and grandpas and aunts and uncles and all kinds of other relatives out there cheering their their graduate on. Big class, 300 plus. Yeah. That was a a big class. And uh, just wish them the best. Next thing you know, we'll be sitting, well, school starts next week. It'll be right around the corner, you know, right there in August. If they have nothing else better to do, they can go out and hunt that cash can. Yeah, we've got the cash can cash promotion going. There. Yeah, we've got the cash can promotion going. Had five clues last week. We had a clue yesterday, but yesterday's clue was not really a clue per se. Then it was just a, a Memorial Day tribute. It was a Memorial Day tribute, uh, yesterday's cash can clue, because I knew people would be out of town and stuff like that. So it was just a Memorial Day tribute, yesterday's cash can clue. But we had five good ones last week and one today. And people will probably listen to the cash can clues and say, I don't, I don't know what that means. Well, there's something in every clue that will lead you to where that cash can is hidden. And you have to put it together like a puzzle. I uh, have so many people who hear a clue and say, I know where it's at. Uh, well, you're, you're psychic <laughs> because it takes, it takes, it's like a puzzle. You have to put the puzzle pieces together, and then once you put them all together, you can figure out where it's at. And uh, so we had today's cash can clue this morning around 710. We'll repeat it today, and these are approximate time, folks, around 1245, around 335, and then around 545. And if not found, uh, we'll give out a brand-new clue tomorrow morning around 710. I didn't get much to the clue today. You didn't get much from it? <laughs> brought, well, brought back members of Walter Cronkite. <laughs> Other than that, of Walter Cronkite and Walter Payton. Uh, after, after that, I didn't get much to it. Yeah. Once, once, you, once you start putting the clues together and each day and goes by and, and, and so forth, you'll, you'll understand what that clue meant. And, uh, but it's like puzzle pieces. You got a little piece here, you got a little piece there, and, you know, you put them together, and then it leads you to the path where that, that cash can is hidden. I just remember growing up as a kid, that was a nightly thing for my parents. They had to watch Walter Conkett. Oh, yeah, yeah, had to watch. Yeah, they didn't miss, they didn't miss yeah. Walter. So. I love Robin Williams' impersonation of Walter Cronkite on Good Morning Vietnam. I mean, there was people actually calling in wanting to know that was Walter. <laughs> On the on the movie, you know, uh, but he did a good job. There's with that. so many people out there going, "Who's Walter Cronk?" <laughs> <laughs> showing our age. Yeah, showing our age. You know, he would have been. Uh, he has stayed on probably a lot longer as the um, as the lead anchor for CBS. If it hadn't been for Dan Rather, uh, Dan Rather was kind of the young hot um, um, reporter, and they were. CBS was worried they were going to lose him to another network. So they eased Walter out and put Dan in there, and Dan was nowhere near 
as good as Walter Cronkite when it comes to being an anchor. Now, a reporter, that's a whole different ball game. Dan was really good with that. But as an anchor, uh, Walter Cronkite just was that grandfatherly looking figure that you just trust. He wasn't as popular as Walter. Walter was most popular. He, yeah, 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 no doubt about that. No doubt about that. But that was interesting. I heard that clue brought back memories of watching Walter. You and your family? Yeah. I was like, you want to watch something else? And that was like, don't even don't even bring that up. That's when back when we had the three channels. All right. Mm-hmm. We agree really had four. We had the educational channel, too. Oh, yeah, you had, had, the, you had, you had the, the public channel, too. All right. Yeah. But that's all you had. And that was it. Yeah. That was it. That was it. And the kids were the channel changer. They'd say, get up and change it to channel three in just a three, mm-hmm. 11, or 22. Yeah. Didn't have no remotes back then. No, the kids were the remotes. <laughs> Hold the antennas. Yeah, they're all the antennas. Well, we had an outside had antenna picture. on a pole. We and had the antenna on the TV, too. So. Yeah, had the antenna on the pole outside so we could pick up the Savannah stations. In Jacksonville, we still had a pole down there, even though we were right in the town uh, with all the stations, but we still had a pole outside. And it's rough as a kid when your dad says, go out there and turn the pole so you can pick up the next channel, and that pole is cold. Yeah. But then we got highfalutin, got one of them rotors on there that you could sit there and turn, and it would automatically turn the antenna to the station that you wanted to pick up. I mean, you were highfalutin, you're high in cotton then. But today, it's a whole different ball game. I mean, all of them from channel 3, 11, 22, 28, they all have like four channels each. I mean, out of all those four, you can get like 16 to 18 channels just out of the over-the-year channels from Savannah. I still remember when the big news was the neighbor got color TV. <laughs> so everybody went down to that person's house when Wizard of Oz came on to see what seen in color. See what it was in color? <laughs> yeah. Get that color TV. Remember, I remember when Disney... You know, the, 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 went the color. I mean, before then, it was the black and white, you know, with all that. And then suddenly, the next year, it was colored. And, every, man, all those kids were oohing and on. That's when I was a kid in Jacksonville at the time. Color TV, that was a big thing. That was a big day. thing. Big thing. Big thing. Yes, sir. Was big news. So-and-so got a color TV. <laughs> <laughs> we're going down to Jimmy's house. He's got a color TV. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Jimmy's parents are saying, what are all these kids here for? Yeah. <laughs> we messed up. <laughs> we shouldn't have people know we got to cut TV. Oh, boy. Uh, the good old days. The good old days. <laughs> now everything's in high definition. High definition. Can't beat that. Over the air, cable, satellite, streaming. You know, I don't see how anybody gets anything done. There's so many sources of, out there. So many channels. Yeah. Just everything in the world that you want, it's there. But um, it'll be interesting to see as each year goes by the the emotional effect that um, smartphones are having on kids. I mean, every report that you read, it's it's not a good thing. Let's just put it that way. I was glad to see the city of Jacksonville stepped up. Shot Con realized how important that game was, so they at least extended two more years. So don't have to worry about the Georgia, Georgia Florida, Florida game. game. Don't yeah. have to worry about that. Leave until at least after the year twenty twenty five. But Shot Con says he doesn't care what it takes, how much money it costs. He said he's going to do everything he can to keep it in Jacksonville. So as we say all the time, it's always about the money. Always about the money, honey. So they went from three million guaranteed to five million guaranteed per year. So money talks. <laughs> it, all, it always does, Bob. Yeah. Follow the money trail, follow the story. You don't hear Kirby Don about keeping that game and her going home and home no more. That two million, that two million dollar. Five mil? Yeah, yeah. I think we'll just stay right there in Jacksonville. Yeah, that's right. That two million dollar extra. That sounds good. That yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah, we can we can use that. We can live with that. Yeah. Ka ching, ka ching. It's always about the money. Always. But they make so much money. I mean, Jack, not only in Jacksonville, but. South Georgia, I mean, all those places, Fernandina, St. Simons, Jekyll, I mean. 
Oh, yeah. They would lose a bunch of money if that well, team gets Remember what died. Larry Munson used to say about yeah. it? You know, people, all these people getting the condos That's there on right. St. Simons yeah. and Jekyll. Boy, there's going to be some property destroyed tonight. <laughs> Just a lot of income for a lot of people that, that weekend. So, hate to see it leave. I just that tradition end, you know. I know it's, it's all about tradition. Even when I was yeah. growing up in the '60s in Jacksonville, I mean that that was a big deal, you know. I mean, I uh, I liked it back when they had the stadium in quarters, but they had too many fights, so they they get it half, half and half. half now. Now, yeah, quarters so. and quarters would. Yeah, but back in the days, it was and it looked. Long, it was. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Red, orange, red, orange, red, orange. Yeah. Now it's red one side yeah. and orange the other and side. Cut in half. So that makes to, a lot more it sense. Used to, it used to be quarters. So. No. Matter of fact, someone just texted in and says, less than 100 days before Georgia football, go dogs. <laughs> 100, cross 99, cross go. 98, Time cross 97. <laughs> Going for the three-peat. <laughs> go dogs. Schedule's favorable. It should be in the SEC title game. So, they win that. They get in the playoffs. And who knows? They might win three in a row. Someone says, yeah, I'm just talking about it. Do y'all remember when we got the rotor on the TV antenna? Yeah, because I was just talking about it. If you went by the channel, you had to go all the way around again to get it. You, know, you couldn't yeah, back it up. Right. It went one direction. Right. one direction. But it's better than going outside. Dad saying going outside and say, turn that antenna. Now you could hear him yelling. All right, that's it right there. Don't have that anymore, not with all the different. Choices we have today. Well, Ryan Blaney finally won him a race after 56 times. Went on the Coca-Cola 400 yesterday, the rain-delayed Coca-Cola 400. Um, um, some people are accusing the Chase Elliott of a tantrum. Uh, all kinds of controversy yesterday in the, in the race. It'll be interesting to see how all that, that works out right there. But... Um, that was that was a heck of a race. I went to bed before it was over with you. Know? Uh, Did you throw his helmet? Uh, something about hitting somebody's uh, rear panel or something like that. I don't know. No, I didn't see it. I, I didn't. I, I, I remember uh, seeing it, but I didn't think he did anything wrong. I think he was the. I thought he was the victim of a crash. Is what I when I saw it, I thought he was the victim of a crash, not uh, any contributor to it. That's when I they showed it over and over, and I said, "Well, dog, going chase is out now because he's a victim of a crash because it happened between two other cars, and he just happened to be in it." Uh, I, I don't know what happened there. I was watching Game Seven. You watching Game Seven? Yeah. I said that the post game is more entertaining than the game. I love watching Barkley and Shaq and Ernie Johnson and Kenny Smith. I love that show. Unfortunately, that was the last show. ABC takes over the NBA Finals. Thursday, so Shaq and Barkley were talking about going on vacation. All Shaq could say is, look out, I'm coming to the Bahamas. Going <laughs> <laughs> to the Bahamas? They said, Ernie John said, what's better, game seven or summer vacation? They said, no doubt, summer vacation. Barkley's Barkley a says, I'm not lying to the public. He says, I'm, I'm looking for my summer vacation. <laughs> <laughs> That's more important than tonight's game. <laughs> Well, they still got the still got the the the, um, the finals to go. Yeah, but they're not doing the finals. They're, they're not doing they're, the finals. They're, ABC, they're, they're through. They, that was their last broadcast last. Oh, night. okay. So they'll be back and when the season gets underway. But they're, that's what they're talking about going on summer vacation. That was their final broadcast. I thought they'd still be around doing podcasts each night about mm -hmm. the games. Uh, they said they're going. Shaq says he's headed to the Bahamas, and Barkley said he's taking vacation time. So that was their last broadcast. So ABC's got the NBA finals. So I'm not sure. Who all is going to be on ABC? I guess that's ESPN crew. So yeah, ABC ESPN is owned by ABC. Right, so. Yeah, so it'll, it'll be, should be a, a good final. Who's that that player for um, for Denver that's so good? That's Foreigner. I can't pronounce his name. He's a, they call him a nickname of some sort. I can't remember what it is. Um, it's hard to spell, hard to pronounce, but. But, he's but a they, big tall. Uh, yeah, they, he's, they, they, he's got a nickname. I can't a, remember what it is. Monster, he's a monster in the middle. He's tough. He's a monster in the middle. Yeah. He dominates. He's a good player. So they said one player said he's the best player in the NBA last night. So it could be. He's tough. Shoot the three. He plays tough in the post. He and Denver's rested him. where, yeah. you know, um, uh, Miami had to go with the full seven, seven. games against uh, – um, the Celtics and, and 
play their heart out every single night like that. And Denver just swept the Lakers, so I mean, it's a pretty good team. Like I said, it's Jokic or something like that. It's a, it's a weird name. He's, he's a foreigner, though. Huh? He's, he's, a foreigner. he's not from America? No, he's, he's all American. <laughs> he's one of them imports, huh? But they, they play some good uh, basketball over there in Europe. He doesn't speak much English. Hmm? He doesn't speak much English. He doesn't? No. Okay. No. He can play basketball there. Boy. And weren't there some basketball players from Europe taken in the top rounds there in the last? He's a dominant player for sure. Yeah. All right, Bobby. Anything else in your mind this morning? Well, just have a great day. Okay. See you. All right. World Famous Butch and Bob Show right here on WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup is brought to you by O'Quinnan Associates, Murphy Builder Supply, Vans Barbecue, First Southern Bank.